Hi, students, and welcome to this session of Live IELTS. My name is Adrian, and I am broadcasting to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having or has had a great Thursday. In this class, we are looking at the listening section. Specifically, we will look at listening sections part three and four. This is the remainder of the listening test that we started last week, part one and two. If you missed it, that's okay. Just focus on this part three and four. If you were there, then you can continue with that. Hi, Surya. Hi, Louis. Hi, Amrit. Hi, Shobhit and Hung. Good to see you. Hi, Christian Perez. To see so many students joining in. A couple of important uh, reminders for everybody. These classes, materials, the audio, these practice exams do come from the world-class websites aehelp.com for academic IELTS preparation and for the general module. Check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com, that's general IELTS help.com for lots and lots of great materials and help for you to improve your band scores. Just another reminder that uh, we will not have classes from Sunday this week, June 16th, all the way to the following uh, Wednesday on 26th, we will continue. There will be a 10 day break there for some vacation for our company members, and then we will continue. So, threat not. Uh, again, if you have questions or comments about these live classes, our products, the exam, don't be shy. Send us an email at adrian, A D R I A N, at aehelp.com and I will gladly help you out. All right. So tomorrow we still have classes, of course. We have task one for members, and then a reading session where everybody can chat. And then on Saturday, we have a speaking part three class coming up. Now let's get into some listening practice. So we're starting with listening section three. For those students who do have our full courses, this is coming out of uh, test number two. So it's CD2 and it's track three because it's section uh, three. Thank you, Pachu, for that um, comment. All right, so I'm just going to uh, switch over real quick to our website. Again, this is our academic uh, website here, the general one. It, uh, Looks like this with the green background. You will find that the listening sections are the same because it's the same for both versions of the test. Uh, you log in at the top. Once you're logged in to your My Student account, we have access to all of our wonderful materials, interactive practice tests for your phone, tablet, PC. You have your full online course, curriculum book, lesson videos, and then here, the uh, fifth tab is, oh, not the lesson videos, uh, the audio CDs. So students, uh, I'm using my uh, headset microphone here and a nice Bose speaker to play the audio. If it's quiet on your side of the uh, presentation, please turn up the volume on your computer or your phone. Uh, try to use a headset, okay? And very importantly, please, students, please, please, do not write your answers in the chat. Give every student a fair chance to answer on their own. Just write your answers in another document or on a piece of paper, and then we can share after, okay? So uh, let's get right into speaking section three. Here we go. Now turn to section three. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section three. You will hear a student and her professor talking about their class.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Come in, Laura. Thanks a lot for making the time to see me, Professor Gorman. As I mentioned in my email, I've been very ill this past week and missing the first week of school is not a good way to start the term. Indeed, it's not a very good start at all, but I think you can overcome it. You had a good grade in my course last term and I'm sure this absence is just a bump in the road as far as this term goes. Now, what would you like to discuss? Well, I don't even have a syllabus, so maybe you could give me one and then we could go over it in some detail. Yes, that would be sensible. Let me grab your syllabus. Here you go. As you see, the class meets each Monday and Thursday from 10 to 11.30 in room A313 of the Juliet Building. Do you know where that is? Yes, the Juliet Building is right next to the Student Union Building, correct? Yes, that's right. OK, so next are my office hours. I hold them each Monday and Wednesday from 2.30 to 4 in the afternoon. If these do not work for you, feel free to send me an email and we can make arrangements to meet at another time. Now, let's discuss the books you'll need. As you see on the syllabus, there are two books you'll need for this course. You need not purchase either of them, however, as there are several copies of each available in the library. I like keeping my books for future reference, so I would prefer to buy both books. Are they available in the bookshop? The first one is, but the second one must be purchased from Buster's Books. Do you know where Buster's Books is located? Roughly, but do you have an address? Yes, the address is 3419 Young Street in Brighton. Right, I know where that is. Do you know how much the books cost, approximately? I think the one at the University Bookshop is about £20, and the one at Buster's is about £15. So that's a total of £35 for the two of them. You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. Great. Can we talk a little about the coursework required? Of course. There are two essays, one midterm exam and one final exam. Wow, that's a lot of coursework. Yes, but at this level I don't believe in just having one essay or one final exam determine your entire mark in a class. I like arranging it so that a student can have a chance to reflect on their ability and understanding of materials throughout the term. That makes sense. So what are the percentages associated with each assignment and exam? The first essay is worth 15%, the second is worth 25%, the midterm exam is worth 20% and the final exam is worth 40%. Would you like to talk about the first essay? It is due next Friday. Yes, could we? Of course. The essay should be approximately 1,500 words and the topic must be chosen from the list. And can I get a copy of the list? There is one attached to your syllabus. Right. So do we have to tell you what topic we are writing on beforehand? No, it's all right. You only have to notify me if you want to do a topic that is not on the list. Right. Is the essay due in class or can we submit it by email? I will accept essays without penalty until midnight after the class it's due. So yes, you can submit it by email, hand it in during class or submit it to the department office. If you submit it to the office, make sure to get a timestamp put on it so that I can be sure the paper was submitted on time. And also, be sure to make... That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And always spend that half minute, students, checking your answers, making sure you have correct spelling and uh, you paid attention to the question instructions. Okay, I'll keep my screen uh, fairly dark here while we go through that brighter uh, table. Uh, let's answer these together, students. Let's just get going on it. We'll uh, talk strategy a little bit later. All right. 
So here we go. Uh, first question. Why does the student go to see her professor? Uh, she has been in the hospital. She has been ill. Or she registered late. Is it A, B, or C? The correct answer, students, is um, she has been ill. Okay, <clears throat> so it's B. Um, make sure not to assume information that you do not hear. She does not say that she was in the hospital. She just says she's been ill. So don't assume that she's been in the hospital just because she says she's been ill. Uh, and uh, she did not register late. She just missed the uh, first week of class, okay? She says, I, I missed my first week of class because I was terribly ill. So the correct answer is B, okay? It's B. All right. So let's keep going here. Uh, now, for questions 22 to 28, you had to fill out the details of the class syllabus. Uh, syllabus is basically the information paper uh, that you get in university and college classes. So uh, know that word syllabus. You will hear it in your classes. All right. Um, so here we go. In this first column, always pay attention uh, in the listening section to the column headings like class times, locations, that will help you make sense of the other columns as well, okay? So class times are something and Thursday 10 to uh, 11.30 and Shukpreet, uh, Sana, Hank, Kalvant, Sobit, Harminder, Lan, Ulugbek, I'll say that's uh, well, look back doesn't, but everybody else says it's Monday. Uh, right, and the easiest way to write that is like this. Okay, the easiest, best way to write that in your answer sheet is Monday, M-O-N. They will take an abbreviation, even with all capital letters, so Monday. Although you should know the word Monday in English, it's spelled M-O-N-D-A-Y. Of course, the M has to be capital. If it's a small M, you will get it wrong, okay? There were a lot of students who wrote small Ms, so you'll get that wrong with a small M. Um, the location. Where is the class? Uh, question number 23. What kind of building? In um, North American schools especially, and also in uh, Britain, Australia, uh, usually at university and college, the buildings are names of people. Okay, it's people's names. Uh, and in this case, it's the Juliet building, like Romeo and Juliet, the famous uh, Shakespeare love story. Uh, you can spell it like this, the English way, Juliet. Or you could spell it the French way. It's okay. Juliet like that. Uh, in many cases in the IELTS exam, they will give you the spelling, but not always, not if it's a common name like Peter or Juliet, okay? Uh, Sukhpreet, it's a name. Make sure in the IELTS exam you write a capital J, otherwise you will get it wrong, okay? Names have to have capitals, okay? All right, so far, so good. So sometimes when uh, it seems like the answers are fairly easy, just be really careful with the instructions, students, and with the answers because you have to pay attention to capital letters, so on. So here we go. The required books. So the students uh, needs some books for uh, these uh, or this university class. Book one is available at the bookshop. This answer comes a little bit later. Um, how much does it cost? Number 24. Oh, sorry. Yeah, some of you say, oh, I missed number 24. Yeah, always uh, careful. Don't miss questions. Amrit says, oh, Adrian, you missed number 24. 
Yeah, definitely don't miss questions because that could really mess you up on your answer sheet also. So thank you for that, Shilpa and Amrit. Uh, number 24, it's in this column. Easy to miss. I was paying attention here, but not here. Uh, and number 24 is office hours. You need both words. Okay, office hours. Good. All right. Thank you for paying attention. Good. All right, number 25. So number 24, office hours. By the way, office hours, you don't need to capitalize. It's a common noun, so it could be a small o, small h. It's okay. And then number 25, uh, Shilpa and Parminder, Lena, Rahul, all say that that's 20. And it is. So you just need the number 20. You don't need any other information. Just the number 20. You don't need to write pounds because they give you the symbol for pounds. So you only need 20. Okay, that's all you need is 20. Uh, pay attention, students. It's cost, pounds, so it's a number. Okay. All right, book two, they say this earlier and after. They repeat this a few times. So hopefully you caught that. Um, now, it's a big B, so we know it's the name of a bookshop. It's a big letter B. So book two is available. You can buy it or you can get it at. What's number 26? Haung says it's Buster. Bustered, uh, Shilpa. It's Buster's uh, books. Buster's. Busters. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, wow, really? I have to know names like Busters? Um, yeah, students, you do have to, uh, for part three, be able to catch simple names. So Sana Sohail is thinking, why don't they give me the spelling? Uh, Sana, this is a uh, section three in the listening. In section one, they will give you the spelling. In section three, they will not necessarily give you the spelling. Uh, in English, you have the word bust, B-U-S-T. There's lots of definitions for that word. So buster is even a word. So here it's busters. So even though it's a name, it's also a word in the dictionary. So you should be able to hear it. Okay? You should be able to hear it. Uh, Naeem, if you have our books, this is from book exam book number one. It's the first three exams. This is exam two, if you have that from our website at aehelp.com. Um, all right. So uh, now we get into the coursework. Okay, this uh, came in the second half of the audio. So coursework means what the student has to do in this class. Now, here we have the first essay. It's 15%. Move that up a bit. So 15% for the first essay. So how much for the second essay? All right. Now I see Raj and Christian Perez and Rahul uh, again and again saying it's 25 yeah, I mean, you should be able to figure this out. How? Even if, you don't, even if you don't hear this word, you can figure that out. How do you figure that out? Many answers are logical. So even if you miss it in the audio, just pay attention. Okay? Fifteen percent plus twenty percent is thirty-five percent plus forty percent is seventy-five percent. Yeah, for Dobbs, that's right. This has to be twenty-five percent as long as the course is from one hundred percent. So some simple math will also give you the answer for uh, twenty-seven. Uh, Hayati, if you have our um, exam books at aehelp.com. This is uh, CD2, uh, track number three audio on the website. Okay. All right. So 
that's 25. Then the last question here for the coursework, 28. Uh, it's 40%. What's 40%? Yeah, Sianu Thapas asking, can I write all of these in uppercase? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Lena says it's final exam. Raj says it's the final exam. Uh, Surya says final. Lan says final. If you write final, okay, that's wrong. Um, in everyday language, sometimes, you know, we tell each other, oh, I have finals on the weekend or I'm writing my finals. But on the IELTS exam, you have to be clear. Look at midterm exam, second essay, first essay. This has to be final exam. Um, why? Because the IELTS marker will just say uh, final what? Final essay, okay? So if you write just final, then the argument that the examiner says, you don't know if it's the essay or project or exam, you cannot expect that the uh, IELTS examiner knows what you're thinking, okay? So if you only write final, you'll get it wrong. You have to write final exam. Is that clear, students? Is it clear why you need that word exam? Okay, so be really careful. These are the kind of easy marks that you can make sure to pick up in that 30 second review time, okay? All right, so I know that some students would get really upset and say, of course it's exam, why don't they know that it's exam? I, they should know that. Well, they don't. They, they don't, they will say, well, how do I know that you didn't think that it was a final project or a final essay? And it's a fair argument from the examiner, right? So uh, that's where you have to really pay attention to the instructions, right? It says uh, no more than two words. So be really cautious of that, okay? All right, students, so far so good. We have uh, question 29 and 30 remaining. Here we go, let's take a look at those. And now I can brighten up our lives a little bit, or at least the screen, and you can see my face. There I am, hi. Um, all right, so again, no more than two words and or a number for each answer. Short answer question 29, how long should the first assignment be approximately? So how long should it be approximately? And it's another tricky one. Yes, uh, many of you realize now that, whoa, 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 it's uh, 1,500 words. Yeah. And again, you don't see any information in the question. It doesn't say how many words or it doesn't say how many sentences or pages. So it has to be 1,500 words. Again, if you just write 1,500s and for Dobbs, careful, Navid, uh, so be, be very careful with this. Again, two words. If you don't see words in the question, you have to write words here. Um, because it could be 1,500 sentences, pages, characters, or words, right? So hopefully it's not 1,500 pages. That would be a very long assignment. But again, the argument is that, how does the examiner know? You caught that correctly, okay? All right. So make sure that you have the right wording for your answers, okay? Don't lose easy marks, students. Don't lose easy marks, all right? Careful, careful, careful. Last question. This one was an inference type question. You had to listen to uh, a bit of the information to figure this one out, okay? So, uh, the student's class ends at 11.30 a.m. on the day the paper is due. Decide whether, a paper, decide whether a paper is handed in on time or it's late. So, in the box here for 30, you have to choose either A, the student received a late penalty, or B, the essay is on time, no penalty. Okay? And then here is the situation. 
The paper is handed in at 5 p.m. on the same day, dropped off at the department office with no timestamp received. Is it A, receives a late penalty, or B, the essay is on time, no penalty? Okay, many of you are saying A, or sorry, many of you are saying B, it looks like. Nur Muhammad. Parminder, Rahul, a lot of B's. Unfortunately, all of you would get that wrong. This is definitely A. Okay. The correct answer is the student receives a late penalty. So this is where the IELTS exam combines your reading comprehension and your listening comprehension uh, together. Okay. Uh, and you have to understand, of course, clearly what the speaker is saying. So the student's class ends at 11.30 a.m. Now, in fact, they're actually being kind of nice to tell you this information. Why? Because they already told you that. Okay, if this is a college test, might not tell you that again. Look at class times, Monday and Thursday, 10 to 11.30, obviously in the morning. You wouldn't have that in the, at night. Uh, so here we already know that it's in the morning. So class has ended. The professor says, if you drop your paper off at the department office after class, you have to get a timestamp so that I know it was handed in on time before midnight. All right? It's logical. Okay? So think about it. Students, again, use your logic, okay? Always rely on your beautiful brains, on your logical, beautiful brains. If you're the professor and you have 100 students and you tell your students that the paper has to be on time and they drop it off after class at the office and there's no stamp or no information that shows it's on time and you go the next day as the professor, you're at the office the next day, you pick up the papers on Friday or maybe even Monday, how do you know that the student handed that in on time? You don't, okay? The only way that you would know is with that stamp, okay? All right, students. Uh, so let's uh, remember these two important points. Use logic. Pay careful attention to questions and answers. They have to make sense, okay? All right, let's continue on with section four. Now, section four, a little bit more challenging. There is no break uh, between the questions. It's all just one smooth flow of answers. So pay really careful attention. Is everybody ready for section four? Can I start the audio? Again, don't write your answers in the chat. Give everybody a fair chance, okay? All right, students, here we go. So I'm gonna cut back to the website. <clears throat> of course, section four, it's track four, CD two. So again, this is coming from aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section four. You will hear a lecture about the dinosaur Tyrannosaurus rex. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good evening, class. If you are registered for Anthropology 322, you are in the right place. Today, we will be talking about the most famous of all dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-rex, as it is commonly referred to. This dinosaur has a fearsome reputation, mainly due to popular culture films and books. In this class, we will be discussing the facts regarding the Tyrannosaurus rex, as opposed to its Hollywood depiction. Tyrannosaurus rex lived from approximately 80 to 65 million years ago. Of course, the reason it died out 65 million years ago is the same reason all of the dinosaurs died out at that time, 
a massive asteroid which hit the Earth and destroyed almost all life. The period in which the Tyrannosaurus rex lived is known as the Late Cretaceous Period. This reality is in contrast to fictional portrayals which often cast the T-Rex as living in the Jurassic period. In fact, T-Rex did not come to be until 65 million years after the end of the Jurassic period. Tyrannosaurus rex was a meat eater, but it is not entirely clear whether it killed its own prey or if it merely scavenged the prey of other dinosaurs. In our minds, we imagine T-Rex fighting to the death with other dinosaurs, but it is not known for sure whether this is the truth. Tyrannosaurus rex was a large dinosaur, not nearly the largest, mind you, but still large by any standards of modern day wildlife. The dinosaur's length was approximately 12 metres, its height could reach 6 metres, and it weighed anywhere between 5 and 7 tonnes. That weight is the equivalent of about 80 average sized human beings. If humans had been around back then, we would have been the perfect size for an afternoon snack. The location of T-Rex fossils discovered is very interesting. They have been found in Western North America, as far south as Texas and as far north as Alberta. And they have also been found in Eastern Asia, mainly in Mongolia. How is this possible? How can fossils be found in such different regions of the world? The answer is what geologists call continental drift. The continents have not always been in the same location. They have shifted and around the time of T-Rex, Western North America and Eastern Asia were connected. This explains perfectly the discovery of the fossils in the different locations. One of the more well-known interesting facts about Tyrannosaurus rex is that it had extremely short arms. They measured only about one metre long, which is very short when you consider the size of the dinosaur. To put such small arms in perspective, it would be as if humans had arms that measured only 10 centimetres. What use would they be? Well, that is one of the questions that has led scientists to believe that T-Rex was a scavenger and not a predator. It is very difficult to believe that it could have been an effective predator, with arms being so important for hunting. Another fact that leads scientists to believe T-Rex was a scavenger was its extremely strong sense of smell. This enabled T-Rex to smell carcasses over long distances, giving it a big advantage as a scavenger. On the other side of the argument, T-Rex had very large serrated teeth, which would have been perfect for tearing through the tough skin of other dinosaurs. If T-Rex was a pure scavenger, it may not have required such teeth. Another interesting point about their teeth was that they were replaceable over time. Unlike humans, who grow only two sets in a lifetime, T-Rex's teeth could be replaced over and over throughout a lifetime. Again, this is evidence that they were, at least in part, likely predatory. That is the end of section four. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. So again, use that half minute to check your answers. Uh, just like I showed you in uh, section three for missing words you know, or paying attention to the instructions or using logic to maybe answer a missed question or two. Let's go through the answers together, students. Here we go. So, a lecture in anthropology about the famous dinosaur T-Rex. So here we go. All right. Number 31. Which of these events happened 65 million years ago? You had to choose between A, B, or C. A says, one, the dinosaurs became extinct, and three, Tyrannosaurus rex died out. Or B, all of these. Or C, it was one, three, and four. The dinosaurs became extinct. Tyrannosaurus rex died out. A large asteroid hit the Earth. What was the correct answer? All right, so a lot of you, uh, Haung, Sukupreet, Sianu, Lan, Mr. Cooper, Aidana, who are saying C, you're correct, okay? 
So, uh, yeah, the dinosaurs became extinct. It makes sense, okay? Tyrannosaurus rex, yeah, it was a dinosaur. It died out at that time. Why? Well, because we believe that a large asteroid uh, hit the Earth, okay? Asteroids are those uh, uh, space uh, rocks. And uh, there's uh, planet Earth there. Okay, so Europe real quick and Africa. Um, so there's the Earth. So it hit the Earth and all the dinosaurs died out, although the Earth actually looked different, not like it does today. Uh, quick question, uh, bonus question. Let's see how well some of you are paying attention. Uh, when did the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex actually come into existence? So how long ago do scientists believe that T-Rex uh, came into existence? Hritik says, I think they said 85 million years ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I believe the audio said 85 million years ago. Uh, students, when you're practicing for the IELTS exam at home, it's good to test yourself outside of the box. So try to ask and answer questions that you don't see necessarily in the test paper. Check how well you really understand what they say. The Karus says 85 million years ago. Very good, yeah. Um, and uh, what period was that 85 to 65 million years ago? So what did we call that period? The next question. Tyrannosaurus Rex lived during which time? Jurassic? Late Cretaceous, late Triassic. Which time did it live? Okay, Lanth, you, Christian Perez, and many of you are saying B, late Cretaceous, and you're correct. Okay, it is the late Cretaceous. Uh, Hollywood says Jurassic because you probably watched Jurassic Park, uh, but that's just Hollywood. Don't believe movies, okay? Um, the reason that Hollywood has the Tyrannosaurus Rex in Jurassic Park is because it just sounds better. When you make a movie, it sounds better to call it Jurassic Park. Imagine if they called it the Late Cretaceous Period Park, okay? People would be like, huh? What is that movie? Late Cretaceous Park? What you say? Um, so it sounds better to say Jurassic Park, but it's not true, all right? It's not true, all right? Probably less people would go to see that movie. All right, um, so late Cretaceous period. Okay, remember that, students, different time. Reality, not Hollywood. All right, number 33, how tall was Tyrannosaurus Rex? How tall was this beautiful beast? 12 meters, 6 meters, 7 meters. All right, again, many of you are saying B, and you are correct. It's 6 meters. 6 meters tall. Uh, how long? Okay, Surya says 12 meters long. Yeah, so approximately 12 meters long and 6 meters tall. Uh, do they use the word tall in the audio? So do they say tall in the audio? Does the professor, does she say tall? That's right, Amrit. No, she says the height, the height. So she does not say tall. She says height, the height of this dinosaur, which is the same. Uh, paraphrasing is very important, students. You can always check the paraphrasing, and you should check the paraphrasing in the back of your books. Uh, good uh, IELTS textbooks will always have the transcripts. Uh, here you have the transcripts in the back of our book on the website as well. And let me just show you real quick. So, yeah, there we go for question number uh, 33. So notice here it says its height could reach six meters. So big T-Rex, six meters tall, the word height is used as a paraphrase, as a synonym for the word tall, okay? So if you miss a question, definitely check the transcript at the back of the book 
to see where that answer was coming from. All right. Transcripts are very powerful tools when you're learning a language and practicing for this exam. Okay, let's get back to the questions. So here we are. Okay. Go back to this mode here. So here uh, we have uh, the next question, which is a short fill in the blank. It's a little bit more challenging. You really had to catch it. Uh, again, the professor says this is called, okay, uh, it's very good, I'm Lewis, that you're learning from your mistakes. That's the idea. Um, for number 34, the correct answer is continental drift. That's right. Uh, now, it is the name of a theory, so to be safe, you should write a big C. But it is, there are proper nouns. So if you write small d, small c, you will get it correct. Okay, so Mr. Cooper, Lena, Lan, Haung, uh, I'm Lewis, uh, Bumzel, those are all correct. Okay, continental drift, you have good spelling. It's correct. Just make sure when you transfer it to the answer sheet, you keep the same spelling. Okay, continental drift, good. All right, next one. So here, we have to fill out a table, okay? Always pay really careful attention to the headings of the table, all right? So here you have evidence, implication. So evidence means the proof. Implication means what it means. And conclusion means what we believe, okay? Now, uh, the T-Rex had extremely something arms. This is a noun, so this has to be an adjective. Okay, for number 35, Nima and Tina and Coolwant all say that that adjective is short. It had short arms. Sure, yeah, it had short arms. Arms are important for hunting. Now, pay careful attention to the question. Tyrannosaurus rex, predator, or scavenger? So in the conclusion, you basically decide whether it's a scavenger or a predator. The professor talks about this. Please don't spell it wrong for 36 or for 39. You have the word scavenger. You have the word predator. So you have to have the correct spelling there. Okay, so if it had short arms, then it was probably a scavenger. So Lanthew Amrit. Uh, Harminder, correct. Hank, don't say not predator. Please say scavenger. Okay. If you say not predator, uh, you might not get it right. You might. Okay. So scavenger. It's right there. You just have to copy that. Okay. All right. Strong sense of smell. So again, strong sense of smell. Um, Probably a scavenger then, right? Able to detect carcasses. Carcass means the remains of a dead animal. Okay, remains of a dead animal. Able to detect carcasses from long distances. That's right, and I can see a lot of correct answers. Good job, students. Uh, distances is countable in this case as a noun. Okay, it's interesting, but it is countable. Uh, distances, okay, distances. You need the word S there, all right? Uh, large serrated teeth. Large serrated teeth means that the dinosaur's teeth were these very kind of sharp teeth like that, okay? So it had these large serrated teeth. Able to tear through tough, what? Arr, 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 arr. Dinosaur tearing through tough skin. That's right. So it has these very powerful, sharp teeth. That means it must be, what? A scavenger or a predator? Why does it need these teeth? 
number 39. Predator. That's right. Yeah, 39. Amrit. Good job. Yeah, it has to be a predator. A predator means an animal that hunts other animals, okay? A predator is like a tiger, for example, or a wolf, okay? Those are predators. Hunt other animals, okay? So it's a predator, like the movie Predator. Again, that's just Hollywood. There are no real alien predators as far as we know, <laughs> okay? All right. Um, so skin and predator. We have one more question left. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Number 40, always make sure to match your answers, students, with the numbers in your answer sheet. So something teeth, again, it's an adjective because teeth, it's a noun. So there was something unique about its teeth. Rahul says replaceable. Yes, Sana, Hollywood is in the air. Uh, it is replaceable. Yeah, very good. It's a proper noun. You don't need capitals. So replaceable. Spelt like that. Okay, replaceable. Okay, students, good job. So with these replaceable teeth, it's arguable that it did not have to be careful with its teeth. It could just be aggressive and attack those other dinosaurs. It was probably a predator. All right. Add up your scores. How did you do? What did you get in today's session from 20? And if you have your score from last week, from section one and section two, then add up your total score from 40, and I can give you your band score. How can I do that, you ask me? Well, I can jump over to our fancy IELTS website. This is the academic one here. And I can go to our score calculator. And in the score calculator, I can zoom in for the listening section. And here, the raw score can be converted into the IELTS band score. Let me just uh, darken that up a bit so you can see it. Okay. If in uh, section four, you're getting um, seven or eight, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so what did you get out of 40? Nur Nurkum Ahmed says, I just got 12 out of 40. I have bad news for you, Nurkum Ahmed. That's a band four. Okay. So Nurkum Hamad, sorry, Nurkum Hamad, uh, Otobayev, 12 out of uh, 40 is a band four. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. Mr. Cooper says, I got 30 out of 40. Mr. Cooper 30 out of 40 is a band seven. It's not bad. All right. That's pretty good. I'm Lewis. If you got 15 out of 20, that's pretty good. Faf, El Haram, uh, nine out of 20. It's pretty tough. You got to work on that. Asha Prakash says, I got 35. 35 is a band eight. Asha, good job. Super thumbs up. Uh, Rahul says 30. I think that was the same as Mr. Cooper. That's a band seven. All right. Sorry, I can't read the uh, Korean. 14 out of 20. It's not bad for section three and four. Land to you. 16 out of 20 is pretty good for section three and four. Okay. Uh, Mithlaj rocks. 38 out of 40. Same with uh, uh, Jap Simran. Uh, 38, I believe, is an 8.5. That's right. Yeah. So 38 is an 8.5. To get a band nine, students, you can only get one wrong, okay? 39 and 40 are band nine scores. So again, this is the uh, score calculator on our website. You can use it. And of course, uh, you can try our website for free in the demo course. Uh, if you like the demo course, if you like what you see, we're sure you will. Just click that big red button, pay a couple dollars, help us support you, many other students, and that will help you to get higher band scores, 
pass the exam on your first or second try. You don't have to do the exam four or five times like some students do. It's a very expensive exam to do again and again. So um, just uh, it's better to spend a few dollars on quality materials. It's not just because I want to upsell you really. It's because I want you to succeed and not just use all kinds of crazy materials that are available out there. So just be careful with that. This is our general IELTS website here, by the way, with the uh, green background. So you can click that red button to join us there. Okay, students, that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow, we will have an academic uh, task one that will be a line graph. That's at uh, 1330 to 1430 Central European time. So 90 minutes earlier from this class. And then we will have a reading session with a reading passage as well. Uh, you're very welcome, everybody. This video is available for your review on our channel in one hour. And if you check out our channel, you'll find a lot of other great videos to help you prepare also. Um, again, you can send me an email if you have questions, adrian at aehelp.com. And do yourself a big favor join our websites, aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com. That's it for today. Much love to all of you. Believe in yourself. Reach for your goals. Always dare to dream. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.